How fast can you cool? Crackle design for truly fans, not just for computers. Oops. Hello everyone, I'm Dmitry with Hardware Canucks and for today's review we've got something very special from a company called Streetcom. So they specialize in unique aluminum designs, their target market are not exactly gaming enthusiast builders but instead someone who appreciates the form and simplicity of an enclosure. This is the Streetcom F12C. And before you might get turned off about the $275 price point, the company's mission here is to focus on highest quality materials and finish, and I sincerely appreciate the fantastic build quality of this enclosure. The entire structure is made of premium grade 4mm aluminum with refined edges, rounded corners, and everything is so well put together. But the caveat here is the unique interior layout is challenging to work in, and therefore the F12C is targeted for users tired of that conventional case and are looking for something fresh and perhaps for even a challenge. So the first surprising thing about the case is the front I.O. or actually the lack of it. The front panel is completely bare aside from the illuminate power switch and a window for an optional IR receiver. Given this landscape orientation and the beautiful design, the F12C is more suited as a living room PC so the omission of any front USB port is confusing. Also, there are no 5 and a quarter inch drive base, no way to put the case standing like so, even though look at how fantastic this looks. The rubberized aluminum feet are screwed in but removable, and uh, unless modded uh, to have the feet underneath the tower, you are limited to this uh, lying orientation. All the sides are dust proof with these clever filters, it's a two piece mount, having a metal outer piece to magnetically press the filter underneath that is held in place with these pegs so the filter doesn't slide around. The triple filter at the top looks great and is completely flush against the panel. They sit securely in place, yet can be quickly removed uh, if needed for cleaning. At the back we find appropriate cutouts for standard ATX uh, power supply, motherboard I.O. and 7 PCI slots. To get inside the case you have these two thumb screws that you turn in one direction to unmount the panel and it's a very clever system with a built-in nut on the interior to keep the exterior completely clean. Clean. The only gripe I have here is once you unscrew the thumb screws, the panel is a little bit difficult to pick up and lift off, unless you sort of nail your way into the lift off edge. But I found removing the filter to grab a hold of the panel to be the most convenient method. Inside, this is what Streetcom was talking about when they mentioned a challenging process for assembly. As you can see, there is no compartment separation, there isn't even a back panel to remove. So what you see here is where you'll be working. The dual rail in the center supports triple 92, dual 120 or 140 millimeter fans with maximum 240 millimeter radiator clearance. This means you can configure the width between the two brackets to complement your desired fan mount. There's also plenty of ventilation underneath the motherboard tray, but the real unique aspect of the interior are these brackets. Streetcom labels them as universal brackets. This has got to be the most innovative way to move hardware inside a chassis, so this is how they work. First, the bracket has multiple mounting cutouts for drives, fans, radiators, reservoirs, or really anything you can fit on the bracket. The second piece of the puzzle is the retention clip, accompanying each of eight universal brackets. To mount multiple three and a half inch drives, you place them in order, make sure they're straight, and screw in both brackets and if shipping the system, it is recommended to attach a third one on the other side for stability. And you can mount four in total uh, for this type of assembly. And it's the same idea for multiple SSDs. However, single drives can also be mounted vertically, three and a half inch drives as well. And here's a 120mm fan mounted on the dual brackets, giving users total flexibility in theory 
of how many drives and fans they want to populate inside the F12C. Now here you insert the bottom end in the little channel inside the case and use the retention bracket to secure your main bracket in place. This is by far the most impressive toolless design that I've seen and it's relatively easy to master. And so starting with the assembly, I got the tall motherboard standoffs installed, mounted our micro ATX reference system with the radiator in the middle bracket. That works great to save on space and have some fans set to exhaust. But then I finally ended up with this configuration to show how cable management is handled. The 240mm radiator I mounted on the side with the space in front of the power supply occupied by the only intake fan here, unless I mount more in the middle top bracket that can also support three and a half inch drives and I installed two there and right off the bat you realize just how little cable management support there is inside the F12C. There are no included clips, no zip ties, no dedicated channels to route your cables. It's all left for the user and I was able to clean this up to best of my abilities and I realized that if you had a full-sized ATX motherboard getting the radiator installed on that one side like you see here would be impossible due to limited clearance. And also notice how there's no ventilation holes above the motherboard I.O. This means you're limited to either an all-in-one water cooler or a CPU heatsink with a downward fan as there is plenty of ventilation on the top panel. And so then I came to another realization that this setup does not make sense as there's nowhere to mount an SSD and three and a half inch drives on the middle rail are extremely uncomfortable. So I began to tear down thinking with a smaller system inside the case I would have more options for storage so I installed my triple mechanical drive array which is fairly spaced out away from the GPU but still covers all five other PCI slots which means no SLI system for you if your hard drive is installed uh, on this side of the case. I also mounted a triple SSD array right behind the mechanical storage only to realize that my micro ATX board can only support four SATA drives which which is the case with most micro ATX boards. And so then imagine the nightmare of having to route your SATA power and data cables to those tight spots or needing to replace one of the drives. And also check out this massive empty spot in front of the motherboard that could potentially house one of the drive arrays, but the rail mounting system is not on this side. It's only on the opposite sides of the motherboard, which means for mini ITX systems, this entire space is pretty much wasted. And so here is the bottom line. I feel Streetcom's mission is excellent. We need diversity, we need uh, higher quality materials and finishes, and we need innovative modular pieces. But on the flip side of that coin, how much functionality do you sacrifice to be unique? There was a clear priority on the um, elegance factor as the chassis is absolutely beautiful and you are given a choice of how you move things around inside the case, but what would have been fantastic is orientation choice as I love this tower look and more mounting lanes right behind the front panel so you have extra options. Despite all that though, the biggest challenge here is cable management as there's absolutely no way to tidy up your cables unless you go in and mount your own clips or reroute some cables behind the motherboard or tuck them underneath some fans or something like that but that's not really the solution even though there's a closed side panel i want to know and i want to feel like my, my job with the system assembly has been complete when i'm satisfied with cable management and we already knew that the F12C would be a challenging case to work in. I mean, Streetcom admitted that themselves. But I really wish that there was some type of cable management system in place to give more points for this premium uh, aluminum chassis and make it a bit more user-friendly. And that concludes this review. We hope you enjoyed. Now, the main question is, are you the type of builder who would appreciate the F12C and what it has to offer in the elegance department and the build quality department and uh, be able to be okay with the fact that there's some functionality elements missing. So let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more similar content and we'll see you in the next one.